Lecture 10 is the musculoskeletal system. I separate it into 10A, which is the skeletal system, and 10B, uh, which is the muscle uh, um, uh, portion of, uh, of the system. So let's start with the skeletal system. Uh, in this picture, we can see um, this is a 12-week-old uh, fetus, uh, and there are two uh, color here. The uh, red is actually uh, calcified bone, and the blue uh, is the cartilage. Um, so when we are in embryonic development, uh, we start off as completely uh, cartilage, uh, and we slowly convert these cartilage into uh, into into bones by putting uh, calcium in them. Uh, so this process is called ossification. So more on that later. Uh, I came across this article talking about uh, this uh, lady who uh, had a rare genetic uh, disease, a condition that causes her muscle tissue and connective tissue to slowly turn into bone. Um, so essentially, she's growing a second skeleton, right? And uh, she has um, progressively uh, been losing uh, mobility, and uh, eventually, uh, she will uh, be completely. Uh, 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 impossible for her for her to move, uh, and because conditions like these are so rare, um, there are essentially no 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 treatments uh, uh, for it. So if you're interested in reading more about it, um, you can you can look this up on the internet. Uh, let's go through the function of the skeletal system. So um, the, some functions are pretty obvious. For example, the skeleton supports the uh, body, right? So we are are, are not going to uh, uh, you know collapse under the weight of gravity. Um, the bones of the lower limb supports the entire body when we are standing, and then the pelvic girdle, which is where your your hip is, uh, will support the abdominal cavity. So that's kind of obvious. Um, another obvious one is that the skeleton will protect soft body parts, right? So uh, your your skull is going to be protecting the brain. Um, your rib cage is going to protect the heart and the lungs, uh, and uh, 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 all these uh, uh, organs are kind of fragile, uh, fragile uh, without the um, uh, the bones around them, right? So, so you know, by having the skeletal system, uh, we ensure we're going to be able to uh, keep them safe, uh, free from uh, damage. Um, we learn about this next function a long time ago, right? We know that the skeleton actually produce uh, some red cells, right? Uh, so some of the bones um, are going to have active red bone marrow, right? And that's where your blood cells come from. Um, you probably remember uh, hematopoiesis, right? Uh, so that's another function of uh, uh, skeletal, sy skeletal system. It also stores uh, minerals and fat. Um, so it turns out, um, uh, uh, in addition to calcium, which is kind of like the one that most people are familiar with, uh, bones also stores uh, uh, phosphate. And we need phosphate for various reasons. Uh, for example, right, energy is ATP, right, adenosine triphosphate. Right? So that's the same kind of phosphate that you store in your um, uh, bones. And lastly, the skeleton, along with muscles, allows flexible body movement, right? It is because of the articulations or joints uh, created by the bones um, that allows us to create movement. So um, the, the joints uh, uh, are, are, are what allows us to, um, to move, but then the muscle will be the one that's going to be a, a, a pulling on it. So bones uh, uh, contains bone cells, and we call them osteocytes. Osteocytes, right? The the prefix osteo has to do with uh, uh, bones, and uh, bone is thirty five percent organic. Right? Organic uh, basically means it contains um, contains carbon. Right? Contains carbon. So. Uh, Thirty-five percent of it is organic. Uh, primarily, is made up of collagen uh, fibers. Um, the other sixty-five percent are in organic mineral salts. Right. So, the salts comes in two forms. They either uh, contain calcium in them, right, uh, or they contain uh, phosphate in them. So there are uh, um, several uh, uh, combinations that you can create, right? So we have calcium phosphate, calcium carbonate, calcium fluoride, so on and so forth. So anything that has a calcium in it or phosphate in it um, are going to be found in the inorganic part of the bone. 
So the organic parts uh, provide flexibility while the inorganic parts provide support, right? You don't want the whole thing to be too rigid. Otherwise, we are going to be quite stiff, cannot move around too much. Um, but um, you don't want it to be too flexible either uh, because that, of course, is going to make it um, uh, more prone uh, to, um, to damage. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the introductory slide, uh, that we uh, actually begin as a cartilage skeleton, right? Uh, and that's common for all uh, vertebrae uh, uh, embryos. Vertebrates is basically anything, uh, anything that uh, has a uh, with a, with a backbone, right? So, um, not just humans, right? For for example, like a dog would be considered as a vertebrae as well. So that. Uh, we all begin as some kind of cartilage skeleton, um, and and what happens is in in, in humans uh, the bones would actually uh, be forming from the cartilage model, uh, and that um, process uh, is uh, going to happen before birth, uh, but then it's actually going to continue to happen even after birth, right? So you probably know if you ever seen a baby. You know the baby's head has a has a has a spot that's you can see it pulsating at the top, right? That's very soft, uh, palatable spot um, is uh, is the soft spot, right? Or the fontanel. Um, that actually is uh, an example of incomplete um, ossification at birth, right? So uh, you know at around eight weeks of embryonic development, you slowly replace the cartilage with. Uh, with bones, right, by putting calcium in it, right? So this process of putting calcium in the cartilage to convert it into bone is called ossification, right? So most of it, it's kind of done before birth, but it will continue to happen uh, even after birth, right? So that soft spot is going to be there for some time, right, before uh, the head is um, kind of solid. And you know sometimes babies, uh, uh, you if they if they're not coming out during delivery, uh, then they, they might have to be vacuumed out uh, uh, of the mother, uh, and that uh, vacuuming force can actually cause their head to become uh, elongated, right? So they, it's because it's, it's it's flexible. The skull is not completely fused together uh, uh, just yet. So your bone mass will actually continue to uh, uh, increase until you're about. 24 and beyond that uh, it's about maintaining the bone mass um, you know by having adequate calcium intake uh, for example so uh, now we're going to switch to uh, another video where I'm going to explain the long bone uh, and compact bone uh, uh, for you uh, and after you watch the video you can come back to these uh, these slides and and kind of uh, study it uh, 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 yourself. So these these two slides are basically what I'll be explaining in the next next video.